Hello and welcome back to another Dark Souls lore through video. This is still a voiceover uh, episode. It will be the last one. So yeah, here we are in the painting of Ariamis, which we know is uh, for an abomination, uh, a woman of some sort. Uh, and perhaps it's for all things uh, abominable. Um, yeah, so this was the first um, level in the game that they designed. Um, so I think it's meant to kind of be the first area. However, um, you know, I think it's wise that they probably didn't have this be the first section Um Oftentimes, the tutorial area is best designed as the final thing that you do once you kind of know the rest of the game. But, uh, yeah, it reminds me a lot of um, Demon Souls, the Imbolitaria. It's got quite a few, like, um, similar kind of designs and stuff like that. It's kind of a looping, wrapping around level that wraps in on itself and it kind of eventually the main path goes st straight through uh, the center of it. Uh, there's a phalanx. Uh, yeah, it's it's very similar to Boletaria uh, in my mind. Um, but yeah, um, we can see here that um, we saw these hollows that were uh, um, on the, on these spears and stuff like that. We also see crows here. And uh, I've mentioned before that crows are associated with Velka, probably primarily because of this level, uh, but also she has black hair. Uh, so it is a fitting animal to represent her. Um, but yeah, you can see these hollows on these... Um, spears here. I'm going to go look at one close up. Uh, there's also this side path that I'd never seen. <laughs> it's like, oh, what's over here? But yeah, I, I, I get the impression that uh, these could be, since this is a place associated with Velka, as we'll see, that these could be those that are punished. Uh, the, those that were guilty and that this is their punishment. Um, you know, we'll see more evidence of that uh, throughout the level, but I think that it's just kind of cool that there's uh, these scary sights of hollows just slammed into spears in the ground. So um, we read about in the Book of the Guilty that Velka oversees the list and meets judges the sins, determines the sins, and meets out their punishments. So I think that this is probably a place where, you know, it makes sense too because we talked about Ariamis is the place where uh, the abominations go. So um, I guess if you sinned, you're probably considered to be an abomination in, in a certain way. And this is another bonfire that's cut off from others. So, um, I'm going to go human and I'm going to kindle, although I don't think I die, so. Um, didn't need to do this. Oh, and I'm fully kindling it, just because <laughs> we're here at the end of the game. And we got the humanity of spare, so why not do it? 20 Estes for all. So let's check out uh, the painting of Ariamis. So we see these big doors here right away, which we cannot open from this side. 
It's the classic Dark Souls uh, um, shortcut mechanic. That's kind of like a tattered old fortress or something. There's a guy hanging up there. You can go and like hit him down from above, but you can also just snipe the, the rope. I think it's just a humanity. <clears throat> but. Um, so yeah, we can see uh, much more uh, punishments in the courtyard here. Plus there's these like cages. Um, we'll get a better look at those uh, later, but uh, it makes me think that people were carted here en masse and, and punished here dramatically. So um, we can see the uh, statue in the courtyard there, which is significant, we'll see. And there's also a little bit of light up in the sky. I don't know what that is. I keep looking at it as I play. I don't know if it's a star um, or if it's a planet or a very distant sun. I mean, I guess the sun is a star, but the thing which we're rotating around, if this is a planet in that sense. Um, yeah, you can see the footprints in the snow, which is kind of a cool mechanic. Or whatever. Um, yeah, so there's a couple of enemies here, or there's one type of enemy, where if you kill them with uh, flame, they do not drop their toxic area of effect, which is like almost essential for me. I don't have a lot of resistance to that. It's these bloated heads. <clears throat> and I take a little while to kind of get a good balance of how I'm fighting these guys. Um, I'm trying to kill them efficiently, but I have a limited amount of combustion, and there's lots of these enemies. But anyway, they're just like hollows that have like bloated up with this sack, and that is, sack is toxic. And if you don't kill them with fire, if you just kill them regularly there's like a big toxic cloud that appears and it can really screw you up if you don't have resistance or healing for, or, you know, there's, um, like if you can't uh, heal your uh, toxicity. So short board is, is new, uh, but uh, it doesn't have many interesting things. A little bit of a fake ambush there. Um, so yeah, I'm looking off in the distance and there's these kind of crow people things. I also noticed that I am literally standing at nothing, which I think is funny. Um, <coughs> and there's an item up there that we can see. Um, but yeah, these crow people, we'll get to see them closer up, but, uh, they are, they are interesting and have uh, interesting lore associated with them. Although I don't know that we get that lore here in this video. Uh, I don't know where that lore would be. I feel like it would be in the souvenir of reprisals, but um, we already have one of those, so I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm just looking around. You can see there's an item that you can cut down over there. There's some pathways over there. It's such a compact level, so. And there's an ambush here from the uh, crow people. Uh, and I thought that it triggered by me standing there, but it triggers by pulling, getting the item. And it takes a second, but. Or I guess maybe we have to grab the item and then, yeah, walk over here. So yeah, you can see these crow people. I will just say that, um, assuming that I can't get the lore through the game, that if they're...
pro peop they're people that are devoted to a goddess of sin or Velka. And they've become so um, devoted that they started to grow crow feathers. Uh, and here's the dried finger. Um, shriveled but still slightly warm. With this many knuckles, surely it cannot belong to anything human. It's got like <laughs> six sets of knuckles on one finger, or on each finger. Um, that basically is an item that resets your invasion timer so every time you get invaded the game kind of sets a little thing so that you can not get immediately invaded again and this one just resets it so if you want to get invaded uh, and fight and do all that stuff uh, you can it's it's a niche item but it's got its uses it has a kind of a different use in um, Dark Souls 3, which is really nice. So yeah, you can see that the rats are white here. I don't know if there's any significance to that, except that, you know, I suppose, you know, the rats probably would have evolved in a snowy place as white. Um, like, the ones that survived probably would have been the ones that were easily camouflaged, so that's probably why. Um... They're white here and dark in the, in the depths. Um, so anyway, I've looped back around here and we can continue on. There's quite a few uh, of these toxic guys out here and I'm just trying to keep an eye out for them. And keep tracking them, keeping track of all these ambushes, but yeah. There it is. So I hit him once, and then I combustion, and that does it. If I can actually do it without dying. They always have a little bit more health than I think. So yeah, I hit the guy once, and then I can combustion him normally. So that's kind of my way to do it. In Dark Souls 2, they give you a way to replenish your spells, but they don't have that in Dark Souls 1, so, you know, I'm just trying to make sure that I don't get screwed. So yeah, hit him once, and then burn him. That's the way to do it. So yeah, um, we got a egg vermifuge here. Is that what I'm showing? I can't remember. <laughs> um, yeah. And, okay, so there's the phalanx surrounding the uh, the uh, statue down there. Um, there's crows in the courtyard. More hollows. Let me cut that down for later. And we continue on. Um, just to be thorough, I'm going to go through up here. Um, I think maybe you're supposed to get to this. Oops. I think maybe you're supposed to uh, get to that from another location, but uh, you can jump the gap here, so, you know, why not? Because there's another way you can kind of fall down here. Um, I'm just checking for any other items before I go down. There's the egg vermifuge. Yeah, so I don't know. And I'm not sure why that's here. Um, I don't, I mean, I guess it's for the abominations, and maybe... You know, someone was an egg sack, and that was considered an abomination. They got banished here, or they sinned. So I guess you find all sorts of things here, just based on the fact that anyone who sins can be here, but I don't know if there's any specific reason for it to be here. Um, a 
Okay, I, I'm. I don't know why I showed that. Um, but yeah, here are the painting guardian outfit, which we can read. <laughs> Make sure the way's clear. Hood worn by the alabaster cloth guardians of the paintings in Anne Orlando offers substantial protection versus magic. They have guarded the great paintings of Ariamis for ages, passing their duty down through generations, but the reason for doing so passed from all memory long ago. So yeah, I, I actually don't really know about the uh, painting guardians or have any specific theories. I mean, there's a painting with all the abominations in it. Yeah, so this is how you would get here normally. Um, you can kind of fall down in that hole from other areas. In fact, there's, it's the only way to go, and then you would come up through here and then get that item. But I just jumped it. Um, so yeah, I'm not really sure any deep lore. I mean, the only thing is that they dance when they a fight with their very unique blades, which is what we'll see Lord Blade Ciaran do as well. So I assume that they were trained by Ciaran uh, in some way. But uh, I don't know if they're, you know, one thing to consider is that maybe they're not trying to protect the painting, but protect things from exiting the painting. I mean, we can see that um, we can see that um, Black Iron Tarkus probably died falling out of the painting. And it could be that when he came out, the, the uh, painting guardians tried to uh, prevent him from <laughs> leaving. So maybe they're trying to keep people in. Uh, certainly possible. But I don't know anything, any huge lore reasons for that. But maybe we can learn some more stuff from uh, future games. We'll build up a repertoire of knowledge. So yeah, here is another undead um, dragon, just the same way that we found in Valley of the Drakes. The only difference is that uh, it's got this cool animation chasing towards you, and it, it pulls, it has like a, its backside is trapped or whatever, so it actually pulls off its backside. But yeah, it's pretty cool looking. Um, I usually try to take it out from afar, but I think I go through all my weapons, well, th through all my uh, arrows here, because I don't think it can get poisoned. In fact, I think, maybe I don't go through all my arrows, but I think I start noticing that it might be getting healed from my poison, because I think if you look at I mean, they're also not doing a lot of damage. I could get closer and do more damage, but I wasn't thinking. Um, probably wouldn't do that much more damage. I didn't, I didn't level up my composite bow at all. Um, but uh, I start to kind of notice on the health bar that it's going up a little. So I'm just like, ugh, I'll have to fight it normally. So this one's a lot easier to fight than um, the other undead dragon. I think they did this one right. Um, it's got three different areas in which it can uh, spew its poison. So you can kind of kite out the poison to one side and then come in and uh, attack him. the wrong choice there. I thought maybe he would go down the center. And maybe he can't. I don't remember. But yeah, it's not terribly uh, yeah, 
just listen to. Um, the poison's not all that bad right now for me, so I can just tank most of it. Actually, I think you can just get behind the poison right up here. I mean, he does attack, so that would probably knock you off or whatever, but... And, uh, yeah, he drops a dragon scale, like the first undead dragon did. And there's a new shield over here. The, the blood shield spoken of in the Lost Legends. The red of blood is slightly enchanted and boosts various resistances. So, yeah, that's probably the Lost Legends. Probably whoever owned it was an abomination and got here. So here's the bottom half, and you can't really hit it and do anything, but uh, the weird quirk is that if you do a jumping R2, it just stands right up. So a lot of people who don't who think that's like a glitch or something, or they're unsure, uh, it seems to like provide a shortcut so that you can run straight to the end if you didn't, if you couldn't figure out how to do anything else. So I don't know, maybe that's intended, maybe it's a glitch, I don't know, it's kind of funny. Um, so yeah, now what we're going to do is try to get these, uh, these crow people and I'm going to kite them out down here because they're just easier to fight down here and not uh, fight on the perilous ledge. But yeah, they drop souvenirs of reprisal. Um, so if you did want to level up in the Dark Moon Covenant, you could do that through um, through just farming these guys, um, which I've only really done once when I uh, got all the items in the game. That might be an interesting uh, lore through uh, thing that we can do. After we're done with this playthrough, we can do an episode where I load up that game where I got all the items and I can just read all the other stuff that I didn't get. There's that star again. Yeah. Uh, also, there's stuff, you know, there's like a soul down there. Um, it's like a soul of a hero or something. I'm good. So we get the red sign soapstone at the top of this. Online play. Leave invasion sign. Be summoned to another world as a dark spirit and defeat the summoner. Certain dark wraiths resist their descent into dark and persevere along the honorable path. So I believe that this is... I think if you do it this way that you don't acquire sin. I could be wrong. But it certainly is more honorable instead of invading someone's world and just taking advantage of the fact that there's enemies, whatever, they can summon you in on their terms, and then you can just do a, a normal duel. Alright. So, let's continue on, and let's uh, open up these uh, first doors. The first shortcut. Oh yeah, there's still a, there's still a crow person I missed. So yeah, there's these doors here, which are locked by some contraption. A fog gate, and that leads us into the courtyard, which leads us into the first shortcut. Um, yeah, there's this phalanx. It's like not a boss or anything, but uh, it's still it's very similar to the first boss in the Demon Souls. Well, the first boss in the military, I guess. And I almost died. <laughs> Not being very careful. I, in general, have that problem that I just, you know, I play without a shield and I just try to dodge most of it. So I end up tanking damage a lot of times, but especially when I'm overpowered for an area, I'm just like, I just move through it. Eh, I like it. 
Um, but yeah, this is the item we cut down earlier. Again, just another humanity. But there's also uh, this item here, which is associated with Elka, Ring of Sacrifice. And I guess we're just going to read that again. To... Oh, I thought there was two Rings of Sacrifice that I picked up. I think I was just trying to check how many I picked up. And I forgot to just check just now. Yeah, you can see her footprints in the snow there. It's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so you can see, uh, those, uh, cages a little closer up. You can see they have big, and so this, yeah, this is the shortcut back to the bonfire. You can see they have, uh, like big chains on them, like they were being dragged over here. And we have this, uh, kind of what looks like a, a, par a parish or a church or something. And there's a locked door behind there. Um, so yeah, I'm much more resistant to fire in general, but you still don't want to tank too much from these guys. And, uh, yeah, there's an invasion here. Um, uh, and we'll, we'll see more about that guy uh, by the end of the level. There's an acid surge pyromancy here, which is interesting. Um, trying to make sure that guy's not getting too close. Um... Pyromancy foreign to the Great Swamp emits acid which corrodes weapons and armor. Not all pyromancy originates in the Great Swamp. One hears rumors of unknown pyromancers inhabiting various lands. Uh, and the spell is outside of whatever. So <clears throat> I speculated at this point whether or not that could have been Ingi's um, spell that he created. However, the toxic and the poison did specifically say they were created by Ingi. There is an egg vermifuge here, though. So either Enki was here and he left, or his influence is felt here. So, um, or it's unrelated. <laughs> um, so yeah, here's uh, King Jeremiah, who is based off of a demon soul character, a boss, in fact. The old monk, but he's easy to deal with at this point, and he drops the uh, notched whip, which we can read about. Whip with sharp spikes, only slightly effective against armor and tough scales, but quite formidable against enemies with exposed skin, causes bleeding. Yeah, so that was King Jeremiah. He's got a great outfit. It's it's actually pretty powerful. I mean, it's a good light light armor build. Um, it's probably close to the sealer's garb, but I and I don't know what it takes to upgrade the King Jeremiah stuff. That could be the difference if it's just regular. Um, if it's just regular Titanite, that could make it way more viable than the, the Sealer's Garb, which takes Twinkling Titanite. Uh, makes it hard to level all the way up. Um, but yeah, this is where you would hit that first uh, item uh, in the first courtyard, um, if you didn't have a bow. Um, but yeah, back to this area. Um, we are now going underneath the courtyard here to my bane. It's a really cool shot of the uh, bone wheels with the with the light shining through. But yeah, 
I hate bone wheels. For that reason, I'm only going to do a limited amount of this. Um. <clears throat> I'm just gonna get the annex key and open up, or er, turn the statue. But, uh. Yep, not too easy, not too hard to deal with if you're, uh. Just take him out one at a time, and you were leveled up <laughs> enough, and you can take him out one hit easily. They're all good, not a big deal. Um, so yeah, here's the uh, here's the little handle here to turn. <coughs> I think it would be cool if the snow kind of fell off as it turned, or some of it did. So yeah, apparently it looks, if you make the statue look at that door, that door will open. Uh, but since we want to look at some other stuff, we're going to go and get the annex key here. So I um, proceed here with caution. And basically, I go straight to the, uh, I'm not sure where things are. Um, so I'm just going straight to the annex key. So that I don't have to explore this area all that much. I don't think there's any other items down here. I should probably look that up. There it is. And luckily this guy just runs at me. He doesn't... Like he doesn't spin. So, made that whole section easier. Um, just double checking. But then we get the annex key. Key to the annex. In the wintry painted world, there is a structure resembling an old cathedral. Its annex serves as a type of storehouse. Well, we definitely want to get what's in there. If it has valuable things in the storehouse. Um, I go to examine these lights because I like that there's little holes that Oh, and I attracted another bone wheel. There's these lights that, you know, come in f that presumably are in the courtyard. However, when I go to look in the courtyard, I'm not, I guess I'm not really sure where this part of the game, you know, like where this level is above ground, but I try to look for them up above. I guess they'd be to my left now. I'll try to look for them here. Don't really see anything. No holes. I'm not really sure where those are coming from. But, uh, yeah, let's uh, check out the annex in the, what looks like an old cathedral. There is some stuff I missed in the painted world. Now that I'm thinking about it, um, I'm not sure where I went wrong. Like, where I didn't go. Oh, I didn't go in there. 
there's a thing you break through and I just completely forget about it. Um, I'll probably have a proper loose ends video before we go to Gwyn, you know, with all of the, uh, yeah, I got them both. Killing all the NPCs and, you know, and all that fun stuff. And I'll, I'll make sure to come back and do, I mean, it's just, there's just a spell. Um, but yeah, here's another like Andre character that they kind of ditched the idea of. You see they handle those guys, but yeah, they they I think they wanted all the um, blacksmiths to be descendants of Gwyn, and they all kind of look like Gwyn, and they're all like Andre, and then I think they kind of skipped the idea. I mean, it, 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 it works well to kind of, like, as a game design, to, like, have all the blacksmiths look alike. So you're like, oh, that's a blacksmith. But, um, yeah, apparently they they uh, abandoned that idea uh, somewhere in development. So, which I like. I mean, I, see, yeah, there, there's the door, and I'm talking about going in there right now. But, oh, yeah, we got the Dark Ember. Ember required for weapon ascension. The church long hid the forbidden black ember, and now a no living blacksmith knows of it. Occult weapons were used to hunt the gods, and are effective against their followers, as well. Oh, I do go in here. So where do I where do I not go? There's one um. There's one spell that. That I uh, that I miss. In this second, I can remember now. Uh, but yeah, this is an important item. Oh, I was saying that, um, yeah, that there's people that are hunting the gods, and I wonder who that is. A symbolic, powerful thrusting sword used by the partner serving Velka, goddess of sin. It is no mere symbol to be sure. The partner is an inhuman swordsman and wields this enchanted blade with special sword technique. Yeah, so, um, you know, my thing that I'm kind of, that I put together here is that, uh, you know, I think that Velka is hunting the gods. Uh, because they did some sin. Um, and so she creates like another kind of religion uh, that people follow her uh, um, based on this new kind of way that she's looking at things. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll learn more about that, but um, suffice it to say, uh, they used to have a, uh, a Covenant of Velka in this game that they dropped, so. Alright, now we get the partner uh, outfit armor. Mask worn by partners serving Velka. The partners listen to the confession of sinners urging reflection and salvation. Their masks symbolize separation from worldly desires. The partner's attire is uniformly black in color and said to be imbued with Velka's mystical power, which provides resistance against all manner of magic. Yeah, so that's what Oswald of Kareem was wearing when we met him, uh, and he's a partner of Velka. Uh, and he <laughs> listens to our sins and absolves us of them, I guess. Um, but yeah, we also got the the miracle vow of silence, which we should read. However, I'm probably prattling on about Velka, and I don't know when we're gonna read that. But um, yeah, I wonder if Velka was trapped in here herself. Um as an abomination, and if somehow she got controlled by the other gods. Um, but it makes me think that, you know, the other gods 
sinned and uh, in some way and uh, and she needed out their punishment uh, yeah here we go Vow of silence secret rite of black-haired witch Velka prevents casting of magic Velka the goddess of sin is a rogue deity but she is versed in arts both new and old and is considered to have a great range of influence even as gods are concerned it's a great line. So she's a rogue deity, so that's another indication that she's broken apart. But it says that she's got a great amount of influence, even though she's a god. <laughs> As in, gods don't have influence normally. Like, she has a great influence for a god. I'm not exactly sure the meaning of that, but it's something to consider the... I mean, if we're going to go with my whole thing about there is no gods, um, I mean, gods certainly had power at some point in this world. Um, but um, maybe they don't anymore, and but Velka still does. Um, Velka's the one kind of main story that I want to know more about and I want to I would I would love to fight Velka or or uh, talk to her as an NPC like in a sense <laughs> there's a big there's a lot to this game of falling short of being satisfying <laughs> I have to admit that when you kind of like hint at your story um there's a lot of like speculation that one can give, which is very rewarding, but at the same time, it's like I just want to talk to Velka or whatever um, to kind of learn what's going on. So yeah, I dropped down early uh, there to grab an item, so we are now going back up here. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I wonder where I didn't go. Yeah, I realized that I, all I wanted to do was come back here, so. I'm not, I'm sure there's people that are, have the painted world like the back of their hand, but there, yeah, there's basically a, a bloated uh, hollow that drops the toxic mist. Or some toxic um, miracle or pyromancy. Um, and he's like crying and he won't attack you. It's kind of cool. But I, I, we'll, we'll, we'll definitely touch on it before, before we fight Gwen. I will try to make a list of everything I need to do and uh, get to all of it before we end the game. Otherwise, there's still, after I beat Gwen, there's still the, I, I can pull up my uh, other save, kind of go through all the other um, items and such, so. Um, that's where you drop down. Uh, yeah, there's the, back of the dragon but it's not rendered here but that's where the shortcut would be so yeah let's go check out the boss of this area quote unquote boss um this is Priscilla who art thou one of us thou art not. If thou hast been stepped into this world, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. If thou seekest I, thine desires shall be requited not. So she speaks in the old tongue. She also looks very strange, I gotta say. Just her face is weird. And she's furry and has a tail like 
the stone dragon we saw in Ash Lake. Thou must return it whence thou came. This land is peaceful, its inhabitants kind, but thou dost not belong. I beg of thee, plunge down from the plank and hurry home. So she's saying we're not an abomination, I guess. And I don't know if being an abomination keeps you here because uh, I don't know if she can leave at any time. Again, I don't know if the painting guardians are trying to keep her and the like in. But uh, yeah, going back to the peculiar doll, there was once an abomination who had no place in this world. She clutched this doll tightly and was eventually drawn into a cold and lonely painted world. And that would be Priscilla that it's, it's referring to. Return. So we're going to try to get her tail I to get cut off. I expected as much from thee. Why dost thee hurry toward thine death? So yeah, she disappears at this stage, and uh, you're supposed to look for her footprints in the snow. You can see they're coming. And then I'm trying to stagger her, and then I'm trying to cut her tail off. However, I'm just, I don't get a proper hit on the tail enough. But why? Before I can kill her. What seek is but as I say, we'll 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 load up that other game. We'll get all the other items. So, um, so yeah, what does her soul say? Uh, Priscilla, the crossbreed, trapped inside the painted world of Ariana. Special beings have special souls. Use this soul of this crossbreed bastard child and antithesis to all life to acquire a huge huge amount of souls or create a weapon. So yeah, she's a crossbreed, and um, she's actually the daughter of Seath, and Velka uh, is what people assume. Um, there's nothing confirming that, uh, by, by the way, but she is part dragon. Um, it, but this is the, my theory about... I'm getting King Jeremiah stuff. This is my theory about... Um, um, Gwendolyn. I think that Gwendolyn is also a crossbreed. From Seath, potentially. Doesn't look like a dragon, but he has tentacles for feet, like Seath. And he... Uh, yeah. A mysterious item once worn by Xanthus, King Jeremiah, the legendary exile. No one knows where it came from. The crown bears high-quality cloth, which is quite soft to the touch, but its bright yellow color stings the eyes and is clearly far too big. I love the hat. Just keeps getting bigger and bigger with each game. I guess this is probably the biggest it's been. Um, yeah, maybe tattered, but the bright yellow color still stings the eyes. So yeah, I think that Gwendolyn is probably um, the maybe an offspring of Seath instead of uh, of Gwyn and Gwyn's wife or whatever. Uh, but yeah, like not Gwyn. So I think that in order to cover that up, he raised him as a daughter to hide his deformity because there's no other deformities in Gwyn's family. I mean, I guess we don't really know the firstborn yet um but we see the firstborn later and see that he's not deformed in any way so um yeah i i think that uh gwendolyn might be a crossbreed of something of some weird thing it, you know the tentacles don't look like seath's tentacles but they look like the snakes in the forest that seath probably created uh so anyway listen to this bad sound effect that i was mentioning earlier when I fall. Boom, boom. See, I'm not sure why my character would... I mean, I guess Priscilla told us that we can do this, but I'm not sure why my character is so confident at jumping off the edge there. I guess uh, I have
have the undead curse, and I know that, you know, at best I'll start at the bonfire again, but I could always risk hollowing. There is a game, there is a version of this game where you never die. Like, you know, this story can be told with you never dying, so. Uh, actually, that's not true. You have to die to cease. But you know what I mean. So yeah, now that we're in Anor Londo and we've cleared the painting of Ariamis, we are now going to um, run to the boss weapon blacksmith, the giant blacksmith, and we are going to create the last of our weapons that we can without the DLC and give him the crystal ember and all that stuff. And I don't know who takes the Dark Ember. I feel like it might be Andre. But maybe it's... Mm -hmm. What's that? Shiny, shiny. Give me that. I, I did say the shiny. giant blacksmith only. I had shiny, shiny. I made weapons shiny. So yeah, maybe crystal is what makes twinkling tight night. But you, you are what I. But you. <laughs> um. So yeah, we are going to uh, make the life hunt scythe. From Priscilla's soul. Scythe born from the soul of Priscilla, the stark white crossbreed trapped inside the painted world of Ariamis. Even the gods feared Priscilla's life hunt ability, and in the hands of a mortal, its power will turn upon its wielder. So, yeah, maybe uh, Priscilla's working for Velka. I mean, the gods feared her. Probably because they fear what they don't understand. Um, she didn't seem all that scary to me. But she has the life hunt scythe, so she uh, she tracks down people and uh, punishes them just the same as Velka. So again, could be because they're related. I don't know. But uh, at least we know that Seath is capable of fathering children and that he has created a crossbreed with another god. Uh, well, we, we assume. And uh, so it's not out of the question that Gwendolyn could be the same way. Uh, yeah, so just right before um, we move on, I go to Firelink and kill off the other NPCs. I don't really know why I do this. This should be in a loose ends video. We should have just kept it at that, but um, that's what I'm doing. Do a quick level up here. So I have a lot of souls. I think I just continue to level up strength so that I may yield some weapons moving forward to show them off or something. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to be doing to end up this series. I don't think Domino has anything for Priscilla, but 
we will check on Domino before we end the the series. To grab any last items that he has. my brethren, but I have to let him go. And I didn't let him fight. Oh, hello. Then let us begin, as promised. It's not that I'm concerned for Master B. I think, uh, Griggs could hollow, too. Do stay safe. Damn, you've lost it, haven't you? Oh, Master Logan. I don't know where he hollows at. But he gives us Hush and the Slumbering Dragon Fest dream. Uh, I think Hush might be new. Where in the Slumbering Dragon Fest ring. But I guess he's part of that secret right of people that, uh, of Vinheim that needs hush and all that stuff. So he, he I mean I guess if Logan's his master he's probably like ranked up pretty well. So maybe that's the case. But yeah, so we have two of these so we've we've definitely read this before. Yeah. No wonder that this town has shares its dark has its share of dark secrets. Uh I guess I'm going to Domino. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if he has anything new. I Shamai, I didn't expect. I suppose. Is a shame, but no matter. Come, not every trip. There'll be more. I think he has most of the stuff from the uh, DLC, so. So we'll be back to see that. But yeah, um, I mean, I guess we could kill patches too, but. As I say, we'll do a formal Where am I going? Oh, I'm probably just thinking about everything else I need to do. Um, yeah, we'll do a formal like loose ends video as I say, so um Um yeah, I'll, I'll try to make sure that we don't miss anything obvious uh, here. Um, but uh, yeah, DLC next time. Um, and then after that, uh, the Kiln of the First Flame and Lord Gwyn. We get to finally see Lord Gwyn um, in, his, uh, in his prime. Or not in this prime, I guess. I just mean as he is, not as a god. So yeah, I'm just thinking out loud, I guess, about where I what I what items I need to get, what I what kind of tasks I need to do. So anyway, um, that's gonna be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed learning about Belka a little bit long more, and uh, I'll see you at the next episode. Bye!